some of the more modern, I guess, philosophers like uh, I can't remember his name now. Say, suffering is is just part of life. So Who's saying this? Like Buddha um, or Scott Peck are saying, <laughs> suffering is part of life. We should suffer. And you're saying no, it's not necessary. So, can you maybe expound on that a little bit? Naturally, suffering human beings have to celebrate their suffering, isn't it? <laughs> what else do they have? <laughs> Buddha did not say, life is suffering. He's trying to tell you there's a way to live beyond suffering, isn't it? He's telling right now, most people are existing in such a way that life is suffering. But the very reason why he is teaching you something is, to tell you that there's another way to live, isn't it? Isn't it so? Scott Dale, we don't know what kind of miserable human, he, human being he was. So we need to understand this. People are coming to conclusions by looking at certain limitations. For example, you know, the psychiatry and other things. People like Freud, they have come to many conclusions about humanity which are utterly nonsensical. It is just that because they studied only sick people, they never got to study a Buddha, isn't it? They studied only mentally sick people. With that they are making conclusions about whole humanity. It's not so. Now, if you can create suffering, you can also create something else, isn't it? Do you see who you are, whatever you may think you are right now, your personality, your identifications, all these things are fine. But fundamentally, if you are really alert and listening to me, you cannot sit here as a man or a woman. You can only sit here as a certain life energy, isn't it? Yes? If you are aware I am a man, I am a woman, that means you are not here totally. Yesterday you are playing a game. When you are really playing, if you are conscious about you being a man or a woman, can you play the game? When you are really playing, all those things fell off, isn't it? Yes? Who you are, your identification, your qualifications, your nonsense, just in a game, did it fall off? For a few moments at least? A simple game, throwing the ball at somebody. Do you see? Your big identities just fall off so easily. If you don't pay attention to it, they fall off. If you get focused on something else, they fall off. So people are trying to experience this in many ways, playing a game, jumping off a mountain, singing a song, dancing, doing this, falling in love with somebody. These are all different ways that people are trying to get involved in something to such a point that they can forget all the other nonsense that they have created. Yes? But none of these things can you sustain for twenty-four hours of the day. Now, we are exploring a technology where you don't have to do anything and still be that way. Because if a certain state of being is related to a certain activity, nobody can maintain that activity twenty-four hours of the day, isn't it? Any kind of activity. Whether it is playing or singing or dancing or music or love or meditation, you cannot manage it for twenty-four hours of the day. It's not possible, not practical, isn't it? So that means, if you can create something for one moment, so you are able to create a certain sense of freedom from suffering for one moment. If you create one moment, can't you create one more moment? Can't you create one more? One more and one more and one more, that's the way you create your life. Fortunately, moments don't come at you in bunches, they're coming only one at a time, isn't it? <laughs> Are they coming in bunches? Only one at a time. If you know how to make this moment blissful, you can live blissfully, isn't it? Now, suffering, Please look at it and see, people are capable of suffering just about anything. Is it so? People are suffering their well-being, people are suffering their illness, people are suffering loneliness, people are suffering togetherness. Is it so? 
People are suffering poverty, people are suffering affluence, is it so? People are suffering discomfort, people are suffering comfort, is it so? So they are capable of suffering ever anything. So obviously they are creating suffering, yes? If you look at yourself, this life energy which you call as myself sometimes has been very blissful. Has it been joyful and blissful at certain times? Sometimes it's been absolute turmoil, sometimes peaceful, sometimes agony, sometimes ecstasy. Has it gone through all this? So it is capable of finding all these various expressions. So if it is capable of all this, if only if you had little mastery over your life energies, what would you instruct your life energies to be? Misery or joy? Joy. Sure. So people who have no control over their systems, they are talking suffering is inevitable. No, suffering is not inevitable, suffering is self-created. If you are aware, if you take your body into control, if you just have little mastery over your body, at least fifteen to twenty-five, thirty percent of your life and destiny will be in your hands, please see. Just your body, physical mastery, is it so? If you take your mind into your control, if you have mastery over your mind, at least forty to sixty percent of your mind will be, forty to sixty percent of your life will be in your control. If you take your life energies into your control, hundred percent of your destiny will be in your control. The very way you live and the very way you die will be decided by you. For more on Sadhguru, visit www.ishafoundation.org